would take me anywhere. What do you mean? We went to the drive-in last week. I want to go to like real fun where we can dance and sing. Ah, uh, well, I got an idea. Hey! Almost live from the beachcomber in Old Orchard Beach, it's one of a kind, on location, starring Rick Panette, featuring the Rick Panette Band, Diana Daniel, Tony Ferrani, Tim Hill, Dave Lydon, and Dave Stone. Special guest, Rockin' and Maggie. Tonight's show is brought to you by Coca-Cola, St. Andre's Federal Credit Union, and your local dairy farmers. make you laugh? Wow. <laughs> I have not seen your hair like that in quite a long time and you were like a bean pole. Yeah, I'm a little I'm a little skinny and uh, but full of energy and Boy, I guess. And uh, oh, by the way, everybody, welcome to the program. We I'm were Pastor, reminiscing. Yeah, we were reminiscing. I'm Pastor Rick and this is my wife. I'm Cheryl. Good to see you. As you notice, we've changed quite a bit throughout the years and that we were in a, a nightclub called the Beach Club and that was from our the Beachcomber. Beachcomber. Yes. Be Beach Club is Disney. I'm thinking of Disney right now. Yes. And we were, uh, we, it was, the show was called, well, I think it ran, in the beginning it said almost live. Yes. It was, it was for our, our show and uh, man, that was like 1987 or something of that Ouch. nature. Ouch. So anyway, well, quite appropriate. We want to welcome you to the program. And since we're in the new year, I told my wife that, uh, you know, I've been, every time I open the show, I always say, you know, welcome to the Good News Program. It's hope for the future, healing for the past, 
and honesty for today. And I've decided that since we're feeling so much better about ourselves, that it's now going to be hope for the future, healing for the past, and health for today because I want to start talking. I want to do a little health segment, mm -hmm. start talking about the things that we're doing because I'll tell you, you can work on yourself spiritually all you want, but if you don't take care of your health and you don't feel good, you got nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think that they work hand in hand. Yes. Would you agree? Absolutely. And you know, and, and very quite appropriate because since we're talking about this, we're all getting older with no previous experience. We've never done this before. Well, if we keep watching these videos, I'm getting older by the minute. Well, you're looking better though. You're getting really <laughs> skinny and stuff. And uh, but and I need a tan. I had a little one from oh, last week. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Me sitting next to you, <laughs> um, I feel like Casper the ghost. Well, it won't be long. We, we got we got seven eight months before we, <laughs> Lord willing, head back. But today's program, we're talking about. Put up the first slide here, Liv. What does this say? We're talking about. Age. age. What's the age, honey? The length of time that a person has lived or a thing has existed. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well, that's quite prophetic. Thank you, Liv. Mm -hmm. That's quite prophetic because I, I think that it's like, you know, Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life abundant. I think that there are people that have lived their lives, and I think there are people that have existed. Yes. And, and you know, sometimes you feel like you're a thing and you just exist, but you know, there's, I pray that as you watch this program, you keep getting more and more information and that your life starts to change because you know, the way, the way you think is what it's all about. As a person thinks, so he becomes. And health becomes here mm -hmm. as you think because the way you think will help change the way you feel and the way you help you feel will change the way you behave and stuff. Yes. But if you want to, Here's some great statements or sayings. Cheryl finds these online, and I love it when she gets to share with it. Yes. Share some good sayings here, okay, your posters. Okay, here's my good sayings. Laughter is timeless, imagination has no age, and dreams are forever. Love, mm. Walt Disney. Yes, yes, yes. And then this next one. Being male is a matter of birth. I love this. Being a man is a matter of age, but being a gentleman is a matter of choice. Mm. And not to leave the ladies out, my next one, a pretty face will always grow old. A nice body will always change with age. However, a good woman will always be a good woman. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to that. I like this one here. Do not regret growing older. It's a privilege denied to many. Wow, isn't that powerful? Mm -hmm. Wisdom comes with age. It's knowing that you don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's what is so it that true. The older I get, if I lose the word wisdom, I always say you're really wise and you realize how dumb you are. That's right. And my next one. I'm like a fine wine. I get better with age. The best is yet to come. Oh, I'll drink to that. Live your life and forget your age. I remember there was a joke I heard one time. He said, I told my father-in-law to act his age, and he did, and he dropped dead. Oh, dear. That's a terrible joke. Oh, terrible, my goodness. Terrible joke. And I think I have another what? one. Yes, you do. Another couple. Old age is not a disease. It is strength and survivorship triumphed over all kinds of Vicissitudes? Vicissitudes. Ooh, like, and disappointments, yes. trials, and illnesses. And last but not least, you had to throw your cat one yes, in there. Yes, I did. I'm not old. I woke up. I lifted my arms. I moved my knees. I turned my neck. Everything made the same noise. Crack. I came to a conclusion. I'm not old. I'm crispy. <laughs> Thank you, Liv. <laughs> That's awesome. That's funny. So, oh, honey, grow old with me. The I, best is yet to be. Remember, remember that movie, uh, uh, Wedding Singer. Remember when he oh, said that? Yes. That was so wonderful that he said that and stuff. Well, I'm we're adding a new old. segment to the to the show, and uh, and I pray that Cheryl continues doing this segment because you know we call this the Good News Show. You know, if you want to watch all the junk that's going on, all the bad stuff, and sometimes I think of it as the work of the enemy. You can watch the news stations, and sometimes mm -hmm. you can watch religious programs. Well, the gospel is the good news. Yes. And I believe the good news is better than we even realize. And. And uh, you know, I, you know, this, you know, this many people got killed today, and I, I always want to sit there and I kind of talk to the TV, and I go, "Do you know how many people didn't get killed today? You know, there was an accident over here, and you know, how many people drove safely in the cars today. You know how many plane flights there were? Do you were? know how many babies were born today? Yes, people die, and there's another side to it. But I want. 
you know, I don't know about you, but I want to bring you the good news. I think that the world is a wonderful place. I think God is doing some great things. I think there's some good people in this world. Yes, they're evil. I, I'm not going to be Pollyanna, but, you know, I told Cheryl, I said, can you go online and just find, uh, you know, some, some things that, you know, every week you can talk about some good things that are happening in our world. So here's my little wife. You go, you yes. take it away and go to your camera yes, there. Yes, indeed. And yes, indeed. Well, my first slide, Liv's going to pop up, actually comes from uh, the city of New Orleans. Uh, more than 300 mayors have vowed to end military veteran homelessness. I mean, that's, awesome. that's just mind-boggling right there that, you know, these people go to war, they come back and have no place to live. But they vowed to do this by the end of 2015. New Orleans celebrated the new year, this new year, by becoming the first city in the United States to accomplish that. On January 2nd, social workers moved the city's last known homeless veteran, this is the gentleman right there, getting the keys to his brand new apartment. And so they became the first city in the United States to effectively eliminate veteran homelessness. The total the city has placed is 227 veterans in homes since the start of 2014. Now, this New Orleans model is being hailed by cities all around the country who want to end homelessness, not just for veterans, but for everyone in need of a permanent home. So kudos to the city of New Orleans. And now my next slide comes from an Episcopal church, go figure, in California, Huntington Beach, California. Uh, laundry time is kind of a time-consuming chore for many people, but if you're wor working and just on the verge of being poor, it costs a lot to go to a laundromat. It's a huge hurdle financially. But at a strip mall in Huntington Beach, church people have volunteered there and people line up for hours waiting for a chance to get their laundry done for free. These volunteers come in and direct them to these commercial washers and give them free laundry soap and the coins. It's called Laundry Love. It's a ministry that they started. They raise money to pay for all the laundry and provide the coins to run the machines. And now this has spread over 70 churches all around the country are picking up on this idea. Isn't that awesome? Well, that's awesome. That and last so but not least, in Florida, Fruitland Park, Florida, we actually did a school there, yep. Northside Christian Church. They know life is difficult for so many people. I, we oftentimes wish we had somebody to kind of help us through things. We just get overwhelmed kind of dealing with the day-to-day -day things. We don't we don't even end up dealing with it half the time. But this is where the folks of Northside Church come in. Focused on showing God's love in a practical way, they get together and help people do all sorts of things. Cook dinners, clean houses, they help them move, they fix all sorts of things. And they're thankful for the opportunity to serve, but want those that they help to know that all the glory goes to Christ. And for their thanks, guess what? what? They just ask the people to come to church and spend some time with the Savior. Wow. That's it. So that's my, my good works for this week. Wow, that's awesome. Jeez, I'm a little teary-eyed here. Isn't that I great? like to hear good news. Yes. Well, speaking of good, yes. I'm going to introduce her. Oh, Here's my lovely little daughter who has... Uh, uh, I'll go to my camera. Look at that. We're, we're, we're big time. We got Ooh. all our cameras working now. I'm going to introduce this lovely little lady who's now going to do her segment. She's growing up, but you know, since we're talking on age, but she's just getting better and better every day. So the love of my, uh, the second love of my life, the third love of my life. Let's see. We have Christ. We have my wife, and then we have my daughter. But here's the third love of my life. Would you uh, introduce our good movie for this week? Take it away, love. Thanks, Dad. Now for this week's good movie. This week's good movie is If I Stay. It's about how life can change in an instant. We have the unique power of choice, and love is a powerful and spiritual motivator to live. Great movie. Thank you, Jacqueline, for letting us borrow it. And now, here's my mom and my dad. What a great movie that was. It was. Oh, my gosh. And thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline, for, uh, for allowing us to, uh, to watch that. Well, speaking of, of uh, you know, since we're on the topic of, of, of age, mm -hmm. um, we got some Bible verses here this week on, on age. Here's one right here. Take a look at Isaiah 
take a read here it says this it's coming up listen to me even to your old age I am he and even to gray hairs I will carry you well they're underneath here yes, and nice to know that uh, go to God is gonna, gonna carry hairs. us you know it's it's um you know we have a choice in in life we can either grow better and that's why I'm glad we've lost weight and we're taking care of our health and stuff we can grow bitter mm -hmm. you know and I really pray that as you watch this that's why we called our church when we we're running a church called better life community church because we just wanted and I wanted to know, is your life a little bit better? And I really hope that as you watch these programs that your life is better. I hope that our friendships get better. I hope that, that your attitude gets better, your behavior gets better, your character gets better, your health gets better. Billy uh, Graham, you know we quote a lot from his book. because I Love those quotes. Yeah, Billy's just, um, I call him Billy. Reverend Graham is just such a master of, 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 the, uh, of being able to write. Here's something he said in his book about age. Is good. It's good. Old age has its compensations. More than ever, I see each day as a gift from God. It is also a time to reflect back on God's goodness over the years and an opportunity to assure others that God truly is faithful to His promises. Wow. You know, a lot of people you know, read the Bible and they'll you know, talk about end times and the end of the world and stuff like this. But you know, if you go to original, um, original will say end of age. And that's why yes. people will say that um, there are some people that came up with the idea that through the Bible we went through different ages and ages of, we're, we're in the age, what they call the age of grace. And after the age of grace is the age of judgment where God is going to come back and judge the earth. But we went through the age of government and where government was established and mm -hmm. stuff like this. But that's why, you know, when you take a look at this verse here, it says, uh, well, take a look at it. Put up on Matthew. Look what it says here. Hmm. God will be here, even, not to the end of time, but what does it say? Yes, it says, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Isn't that powerful? Mm -hmm. You know, and I love this verse, too, when you talk about age, that um, we didn't put it up there today, but I was reminded of Corinthians. It says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. You know, and now, you know, it's time to put away my childish, childish things. things. And I'll tell you a thing, you know, there are things that I think are so childish. I mean, some of it is complaining. You know, we all have these moments where we, where we regress. Mm -hmm. You know, complaining is so childish. Fighting is so childish. Gossip. And gossip is so childish. There's so many things that, you know. Jealousy. The, jealousy. They're childish. And, you know, and this is why the first I just quoted from is from Corinthians 13 where he talks about love. and. You know, only mature people can love. This is why I get such a kick. This will make you laugh. Don't mean to offend anybody, but isn't it funny that when you look at, when you know, not that this is something I do, but years ago, when you look at a pornographic video, it says for mature audiences only. <laughs> I always thought that that the should say. The little label, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. mature, I always think that it should say for immature people, you know, because yeah. if two people, if you want to sit around and watch yeah, people mature, naked, you're you? mature, yeah. you just don't tend to do that. So, you know, it's well, kind of a, funny, one of these things. Well, here's what Billy Graham has to say about retirement. Ah, yes. God isn't finished with you when you retire. When we know Christ, we never retire from His service. No, we don't. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. Especially for pastors. Yes. yes. <laughs> Once a pastor, you are always a pastor. Yes. Thank you, Liv. And here's a verse from Hebrews. Boy, the time's just flying I, by. I know. You know, I'm looking at, we have a clock right here that we watch, and it's on an iPad, and we try like to keep it off. I should be speed talking right yeah, now. Yeah, but here's a, here's a verse, again, when we talk about the age to come. Here's a verse from Hebrews. What's it say? Who have tested the goodness of the Word of God. Tasted. Who have tasted. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have my glasses. Who have tasted. The, that would make more sense. Yes. The goodness of the Word of God and the power of the age to come. You know, yeah. It, um, you know, we, we have people, you know, especially here in this ministry that, that, you know, teach on revelation and the things that could possibly happen. And some people believe... You know, they talk about rapture, and that means where the saints would be all taken away. And some people believe that we're going to go, we'll be raptured before the tribulation. Some people, people believe that it's going to happen, um, you know, during, I mean, halfway, three and a half years, whatever. But I will tell you this. The good news is, is that whatever happens, God will be with us. God will be oh, with yes. us in, in all. And, and, you know, I have, we have seen it. We have... We have seen how God has been in our lives, and it's just absolutely incredible. Here's some. Um, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm. It's Saturday, and we're filming this. I'm getting a little spacey. I'm sitting here going, "Okay, I have no idea where I am." 
Oh, I tell you what, Billy Graham quote, here it is. Yes. Thank you for giving me grace. Life can grow sweeter and more rewarding as we grow older if we possess the presence of Christ. Sunsets are always glorious. It is Christ who adds colors, glory, and beauty to man's sunsets. I you know, love that one. Yeah, you remember that uh, one of the, uh, we're teaching the Beatitudes in Bible mm -hmm. study, and, mm -hmm. and blessed are the something for they shall inherit the earth, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. Mm -hmm. And I always wondered about inheriting the earth. Some people believe that, you know, when all is said and done, we're going to come back here and spend eternity on earth. Mm -hmm. And, um, but I've always wondered if inheriting the earth simply meant that, um, you know, you, you just, once you Christ comes in your life, just notice things more often. Mm. You know, I mean, one thing I notice, I go through old pictures sometimes, and I think, oh my gosh, honey, you're beautiful now, but you were gorgeous back then. <laughs> and I was like, I didn't see it. And you know, the sunsets were happening, but I didn't see it. There are just so many things, and I, I believe that when the light comes on, and you know, you appreciate things so much as as you get older, and and, and sad for people that you know, are so busy with with working and, and just never take the time to look outside and mm -hmm. because time is going by oh, and you can't boy. run it back. Mm -mm. Let's take a look at a Billy Graham quote, the last one here today. Mm -hmm. That's not a Billy Graham quote, it's, but no, we'll read that one. This is the, the okay. Oh, did, do I, did I do the verse? There you go. Thank you, Liv. You know where I'm going. I'm so glad oh. she's keeping track of us, but no. now, once for all, he has appeared at the end of the age to remove sin by his own death as a sacrifice. Isn't that powerful? And now here's the Billy Joel quote. Life has its share of joys and laughter, but we also know life's road is often very rough. Temptations assail us, people disappoint us, illness and age weaken us, tragedies and sorrows ambush us. Evil and injustice overpower us. Life is hard, but God is good, and heaven is real. Isn't that wonderful? For Amen the great for that. hope. Great mm -hmm, hope. Mm -hmm. Well, we you know we've we've we're coming to the end. Well, we still got another song to do, but I want to put up on the screen and remind everybody of our Bible study. Oh, Wednesday, yes. Yes, don't forget a Wednesday. I'm in. What am I in? Part two. I can't remember now. I don't know. Maybe I needed to get a little more sleep today here. I'm just a That's okay. That's why there's grace. Yeah. But make sure, uh, I believe we're going to be on part three, but yeah. do, do catch up on the other parts of the new series, The Good Life, A Study of the Beatitudes. It's on the Consider This Bible Study every Wednesday. So make sure you take a look at that. And our online buddies, put this dun, slide da, up da, da, here. Da. Our online buddies. Online buddies. Well, okay. I want to say something. Our, All right, uh, then you go. About our good friends. I, I want to tell you this, and I know my wife agrees. You know, we're, we're doing people's statements is where you start to add up what people have given uh, throughout the year. And I'll tell you, there is, you know, a lot of people, there's, you know, people give little amounts and people who, you know, do certain things for us. But there's three people that I definitely want to recognize that are so consistent, had incredible, incredible power, I mean, incredibly affected our lives. One is Steve in Maine. Thank you, Steve for your, your gifts, you have kept us alive and you've kept us, you know, kept food on the table and I'm so grateful for you. Another person I want to thank is, you know, is Ted and Elise. Ted and Elise, um, we could have never made it to Florida last year. You wow. know, I'm reminded of how much money you put out uh, so that we could have hotel rooms and live. I, you know, I will totally, totally so be indebted to you for the rest of my life and as in friendship. Not from a sense of guilt, but just just being grateful for what you've done for this ministry. And last but not least, you, you know Jacqueline, Jacqueline, who's just helped us out. I mean, Jacqueline, you were the one who who put, gave us the money so that we could go on diets and stuff like that. And we're feeling so much better thanks to you and 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 your and your sister Ruth, who've been so wonderful, wonderful and friends. And thank you for all of you that you know still send us money and stuff. And and I must tell you something. Next slide here. I'm putting up this thing called New DVD, and I'll tell you why. I am getting closer to finishing the CD that I promised last month. Don't beat me up, don't beat me up. Thank you, Liv. Uh, I just want to go back to the camera here. Look at this face, don't be mad at this face. What a face. 
I tell you, I, I tried to finish this in January. We had to rehearse to do things. I got a cold that lasted for two weeks. Oh yeah, you were sick for oh, a long time. Oh my gosh! And then you know we had I had to fly to Florida. So I am sending out for last month a DVD of me when I was since we're doing on age with me when I was very young, and it's called How to Stay Sane in an Insane World. Oh. Which is so good, though. Yes, and and you you'll see how consistent my message has been through the year. But oh my gosh, that'd take me out. I was so cute in that video. Just just. But you're all mine, baby. Oh my gosh! And now speaking of age, I want to introduce this song because this was on part of the show that we did uh, at the Beachcomber, and I sang an Elvis Presley song called "I Can't Help Falling in Love with You." But I bring my mom and dad out oh. on the stage, and my dad starts to cry. And, oh. you know, Tissue I know, warning. Tissue yes, warning. I know they're both in heaven. But uh, you know, you, I hope you enjoy this. And please excuse these videos get a little shaky. It's the memory that that, that counts. But I'm sitting, the mom singing to mom and dad. And uh, if you can hear me, I love you and miss you. And I hope to. Oh, I was going to say, I hope to see you soon. I don't want to say that. I'll see you in a while. But here's um, here's um, me singing to my mom and dad called. I can't help falling in love with you. Love you, Mom and Dad. Hey, Mom and Dad! Mom and Dad! Here. Yeah. Gonna get it. Well, come on, have a seat here. I'm going to sing you a song. Maggie. Bye. Here we go. It goes like this. You remember this one. It goes... Why? Man say only fools rush in, but I can't help for.
Oh my gosh. Oh. Okay, I'm speechless. Oh. Well, let me just say this to those of you out there. I'm gonna have Cheryl close with a prayer, but you know, if you have someone, if you still have a mom or a dad still alive, give them a call. Okay, I know parents can be difficult. Heck, we're we're all going to be difficult. We're difficult we're right now. <laughs> we're difficult right now as we get older. But uh, you know, if you have someone, a relative, an aunt, an uncle, or somebody, you know, people aren't here forever. So just take the time. You know, after you get here, maybe that song touched your heart. Just pick up the phone and give them grace. And you're going to love the prayer that Cheryl's going to read at the end because you know we're all doing the best we can with the information we have. And you know, I used to say this as a joke, but now I think it's really real. Be nice to your kids; they will choose your nursing home. And uh, do you hear that, Liv? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, I uh, you can do the best you can to to be as nice as you can. And here's my lovely wife. Thank you for joining us for the Good News program. And and uh, here's my lovely wife for the closing prayer. Yes, we're going to close in prayer now, and it's going to come up on the screen so that you can read along with me. Blessed are they who understand my faltering step and shaking hand. Blessed are they who know my ears today must strain to hear the things they say. Blessed are they who seem to know my eyes are dim and my wits are slow. Blessed are they who look away when I spilled coffee at the table today. Blessed are they with cheery smile who take the time to chat for a while. Blessed are they who know the ways to bring back memories of yesterdays. Blessed are they that make it known that I am loved, respected, and not alone. Just like you, to us, it is personal. And this is my prayer for us all. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Have a great week, and we'll see you soon.